Assalamu alaikum. I'm back. Uh, I had to change memory cards, so hence the outfit change. Not that I thought I would spice things up. So, where better be? Where better be? Super is not, um, English is not my first language, so it's gonna start showing towards the end of the video. Okay. So I got these Islamic books and I hid them under my bed, as we established, right? So I started peeking into them every once in a while. Uh, so I looked at them and, oh, that's what I was about to do on Instagram. If I'm not mistaken, the name of the book that was the first stepping point for me was... Advertisement! Uh, a brief illustrative guide towards understanding Islam. I really wanted to show the book and everything, but I'm not at home right now, so I can't show the book. Anyway, inshallah, I will put the link and the name of the book down below, or even if I am IT enough, then maybe I will add a picture here to my video, but um, I'm a super newbie to all of this, so no hopes. Anyway. So I would read these books, right? Especially this one, The Brief Illustrative Guide. And uh, this is a very good book for atheists, uh, which I was, you know, before, because it is not, um, it is a book, it's very short, it's, it's very, very thin, it's very factual, and what the book is about is that um, it's scientific proof why Islam is the truth. It speaks of, uh, oh gosh, I don't know how to speak of these things in English. How do you say that? It's a good book. Read it. It's very factual, okay? It speaks of the mountains. It speaks of the human brain. It speaks of the way a child comes to life inside the mother. Uh, it speaks about different types of water. All of these things, really, people are discovering, you know, discovering these things in the 20th, 21st century. So uh, that that's really something that will make you think. That is a very good book. I recommend it to Muslims, non-Muslims. Just check it out. For me, that was a life-changing book. Uh, I didn't know it at the time. It was not like I read it and I was like, Whoa, my life's so changed now. But like, uh, it, it was all gradual, you know? So, but at the time being, I still, you know, hit the book right back under my bed. But I started noticing that whenever I would have a debate or a discussion with anyone, then uh, I would start defending the point of view of Islam. You know, about the creation of the world or anything like this. I would defend the point of view of Islam. But if anyone were to tell me that, oh, are you a Muslim? I would be like, no way, you know, you crazy. And actually, the things that pushed me towards studying religion as a whole or, you know, getting out of my phase of God knows and it's enough were things that I can't remember if the person who asked me this was a Muslim but definitely the person was a believer. I'm pretty sure the person was a Muslim. That uh, they raised questions in my head that I've never thought about in my entire life before. Like, where did you come from? Where are you going? Uh, why don't you just, you know, vegetate on the couch every single day, all day, every day, you know? Um, so those are questions I never even thought about, you know? Thinking about death was like super taboo. Like, you don't speak about it, you don't talk about it. It's just like, no, you know? Uh, so I started thinking about these things for the first time in my life. And these are things that also motivated me, you know? Uh, fear definitely motivates people. And that's what happened to me. Um, I was like, okay, you know, I might deny with 99% of me that uh, it, it's not true, that God is, you know, non-existent. But still, that, that knowledge that I'm just me. Like, what if, you know? So, this was already something in my mind. And then a person asked me, okay, a believer. Uh, that person asked me, Okay, let's pretend that in the end there is no God. What will I lose? Hence the believer. I'm not going to lose anything. I lived a better life. I always had someone by my side. Uh, religion is basically ethics, how to be a good person. I didn't lose anything. In the end, alhamdulillah, you know? Uh, and uh, if God is non-existent, what are you going to lose? You're not going to lose anything. You know, yay, yay us, you know? 
Uh, but, uh, okay, but let's think about it the other way. Like, there is always gonna be the two possibilities. No one, at that point, I, we would be like, no one knows. Uh, so that person asked me, okay, but let's flip the coin and imagine the situation the other way around. What am I gonna lose if God is there? I'm not gonna lose anything. I lived a better life. I followed ethics, how to be a good person. I always had someone by my side. I was good and I always had hope. I lived a good life and I will get to a very, very, very beautiful place, inshallah. And, uh, but dear Eileen, do you dare to imagine if there is a God, what would happen to you? And wow, that hit me, you know? Again, lot, not momentary, like, poof, I'm so hit now. Why do I do this every time? Uh, so uh, that really hit me, and I contemplated over that a long time. I was like, wow, you know, I, I, I can't say I know. I am just, just the same way. I am, I am just a girl from a small country, from in a small place, small person. I can't say that I know. You know, I can't, I can't make that decision that I know. I need to investigate this. I need to know what this world is. I attended a lecture in university um, and the professor is Christian and he began the lecture with uh, not wanting to know the religions of the, the religions of the world is like not wanting to know your fellow beings, the majority of people on this planet. Because even though in our country and in our society religion might not be common, God might not be common, something every day, um, but the majority of the people of the world, they believe. In one thing or another, they believe. And it is the most selfish thing not to want to know them. Listening, it was contemplating, it was reading, it was analyzing, it was observing, it was debating, it was all these things that added up to me being a Muslim in the end. Um, I've always really loved Arabic. That is my language. For some people it's Spanish, but for me it's like, you know, in the airport, when I see Arabs then, and I hear them talk, I like go freakishly close to them and I'm like, oh, you know, it's weird. But I really love the language, it's beautiful in my opinion. And by that time, we had established an Islamic cultural center in my country. And an Estonian woman was going to teach Arabic there. So I signed up for the classes, you know, I was very astonished that they're free and everything, you know, I was like, whoa, what's happening? Uh, and that same woman was a convert for very many years by that time, very educated on Islam and an Estonian. So for the first time I would have info on Islam and Estonian from an Estonian Muslim, which to me was amazing. Because if at all possible, study religion in your own language. Even though I feel like English is my mother tongue, at first I really needed, I needed to hear it in my language. But I always thought I was alone with my thoughts and I still had this thought that Islam is something distant, you know? And uh, so I went to, let's call it a mosque, you know? It's an Islamic center, it's not really a masjid, but uh, henceforth it will be called the mosque. Uh, so I went to the mosque, I was super scared. This is another thing, I don't know why people are scared to go to the mosque at first. I went and, oh my goodness, I saw a classroom full of people just like me, like, a he not huge, but like a group of women just like me. All ages, but the same questions, the same search, the same path, the same desire to know who is God, what, what, why are we here, what are we doing? The same thing that nothing else answered their questions, nothing else made their heart tick. For the first time I had like, like a moment of realization that wow, you know, it's, it might not be distant. Long story short, just uh, we studied the Qur'an like really down to detail, you know, for the first time, you know, we took every chapter of the Qur'an and we started by, you know, Bismillah, Bi Ismi Allah, like even dividing the words into parts and analyzing what they mean and what are the prefixes and affixes and what's the meaning of everything. We recited the Qur'an, we spoke of its meaning in my, my mother tongue, you know, which is like, dying and nobody speaks it so um <clears throat> it didn't take long until that was the only day of the week that i waited for i was absolutely hyper every time i came out 
out of the class, uh, <clears throat> I, it was not any, it, like, it no longer was something that I was studying as something interesting and then closing the books and thinking nice fairy tale as I did earlier. But I believed in it with every bit of my being, like everything was my truth. And I remember I wanted to go to every lesson because I was like, I want to know what else is my truth. Like I, like, you know, that feeling that you want to know everything right now because there's just so much information. This is what happens to a lot of new Muslims. Like uh, religion becomes your drug at first. Like you're so high on it, you can do anything. You feel like you can do anything, you know? That doesn't last and try to be rational with that religious high. Anyone who is on it right now, who is watching this. But it's, it's a beautiful phase. So I, I knew with every bit of my being that I, I am a Muslim, you know. Uh, alhamdulillah. <sighs> but even knowing that, I did not practice. I did not pray, I did not do anything. When the rest of the women would go to pray, I would just, you know, sit in my behind my desk and I would be waiting for them to come back to learn more about Islam, you know? A tad hypocritical, because it, it went on for a while. Unfortunately, something very bad had to happen to me to uh, push me towards prayer. We should all know that life is fragile and you might not get tomorrow. I pray that none of you needs a reminder that harsh in order to uh, better yourself and take action. So, uh, I remember the first time I prayed. Uh, the first Islamic prayer. I had prayed once before, which was hilarious. I wanted to pray for someone I dearly love and um, I did not know how to pray and I still had fake nails and uh, I didn't know anything about prayer or Islam or anything. That was like my first prayer that was not an Islamic prayer, but it attempted to be. Oh my gosh, I remember. I did not know that you can't pray in the bathroom. And I knew that Muslim women or, you know, like believing women are somewhat covered. So I was in my robe and I put the towel, you know, the way you do when your hair is wet. And I was like, you know, I, I had no idea about anything. And I was just like, you know, I went into sujood because I had seen Muslims do that. And I was just like, dear God. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but that was just like, I didn't know anything about prayer. Uh, sometime later, um, oh, that was still in the phase I did not admit to myself that I was Muslim. Ironic. And so my first Islamic prayer was three years ago in April. Alhamdulillah. Uh, my first prayer was like 25 minutes or something, and now it's like four. <laughs> um, oh wow, that was an experience on its own. Um, so my first prayer, briefly. Um, I took all the notes, you know, what you're supposed to say and what position you're supposed to do. Oh, and I was, I was dead sure that I'm going to be the first Muslim in the world who does not pray, like who can't pray because they're too stupid. I was just, I was looking at the pages and I'm like, no way, man. And I was just like, what? I was, I was really, I'm like, no, no way. Th this can't be done. But this is very typical. Like I said so until I tried it. And of course I pray, alhamdulillah. Uh, so I put all the notes around me and you know I'm like reading from here and then from here and then from here and then from here and then ah oh, now this pose um, I started with you know one prayer then two then added the third one then fourth and then eventually Fajr also was added to my list of prayers and uh, Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah um, so you know don't worry about all the mess and everything, it's gonna be okay. I think, I believe it took me like uh, a week to more or less memorize what I was supposed to do. Oh, well, if it takes longer, it's fine. You know, don't worry about it. It's the intention that counts. What else can I say to you? Oh, then I took my Shahada on the 14th of May, 2011, Alhamdulillah, which was an amazing day. Uh, it was in our local Islamic center. Um, I don't know what else to say exactly to end this video. Um, I'm not pushing my views on anybody else. Uh, there's loads of other topics I could cover, but I'm not going to cover them here because I want to keep it on point and I want to make this merely about my story to Islam.
I'm more peaceful, I am happier, I have a I have a purpose, I have the knowledge that no matter what happens or no matter how much I fall, everything is okay. I strive. I you know many people tell me that you don't need faith in order to be a better you don't need faith in order to be a better person. Well, I am a better person exactly due to my faith. My faith makes me better, it fulfills me and it completes me and I have no idea how I ever lived without it. I pray that all of you would find this sort of peace. I'm not saying you have to find it in the similar way as I did, but this peace and contentment of the heart is the most amazing thing you will ever experience. All I can say is that it's been the best decision of my life and if I would have to compare it to anything, it is as if my entire life I was blindfolded and suddenly someone let the fold loose and mashallah the world is just gorgeous. Subhanallah. Um, I'm very happy in Islam so I don't appreciate anyone ever thinking that I am oppressed or I'm brainwashed or I'm forced into anything or I'm just plain stupid. Uh, to end this video I want to say that atheism was not my choice but Islam is firm as ever and inshallah it never goes away and inshallah I hope you find a peace of heart on your own and I pray for you all the best inshallah Assalamu alaikum